We've been talking a lot about the AI trade in recent weeks, some uh, throwbacks to the dot-com area when we're talking about circular funding and vendor financing. Right now, we're seeing this race in chatbots. Is there, is there a plain language way to look at it? Is there some comparison that kind of applies to everyday life that we can look at it? Is it kind of similar to, I've heard somebody talk about VHS and beta, and the battle isn't over the tech. It's on who can just kind of take the mainstream aspects that people are looking for and deploy it faster? So in deploying technology into society or into new markets, there's always going to be two elements of that battle. The first is technological. You cannot be, for example, a major phone uh, provider in the world on, a, on the hardware side if your cameras uh, take pictures that still look like the digital cameras from, you know, maybe 15 years ago. So you have to make sure that the technology itself is up to par and is capable of being able to keep up with others who are developing that technology. Technology. But that's only one piece of the battle. The larger battle is thinking about how you capture users' attention. So you can build all the great tech that you want, but who will come and actually use that technology? And so as we're trying to figure that out, what we're seeing now is a natural evolution in the AI race to follow that general market concept, where they're moving away from fighting over who has the best models, who has the best training techniques, the best inference te techniques. And we're moving into how do we get users to consistently use our products and technology and profit from that. And so right now, the technology gap between Gemini and OpenAI is essentially closed. I mean, Gemini 3 is a, basically a model, a, a marvel of engineering, and you know, so is ChatGPT5. Mm -hmm. But again, we're moving away from cool technology to how do we get people to use it. Now, in reality, Google has more channels to distribute their AI, right? They can stick it inside of multitude of their products, but OpenAI has something that Google is still fighting for, which is habit. When you search something, you don't search it, you Google it. Well, now when you want to think, you ask ChatGPT. And there are 800 million people weekly who use ChatGPT. And so their moat is human behavior, not just code. So, you know, Gemini can be embedded inside of Google's products and be a formidable portion of the market share, but OpenAI is betting on the fact that people want more than smart spreadsheets, that okay. they want technology that's ingrained into the fabric of society, and they're using that to inter okay. introduce new products. X, nobody would know better than you, but I just want to be clear. So you're saying it's a dead heat. When we're looking at OpenAI and Google, you're saying it, it sounds like you're saying it's even, right? So with that in mind, as we see the deal between OpenAI and Disney, what does that mean for this race? Because they're going to have the, the uh, access to intellectual property that all of us know and all of us love and be able to mm -hmm. kind of integrate that into their chatbot and integrate that into their image generators. Is that an edge? Is that a significant edge in your mind? That's absolutely a significant edge. I mean, the uh, Disney franchise is probably one of the largest media franchises in existence, uh, especially with its penetration from users uh, across all age groups and across you know different languages and different regions of the world. And so being able to incorporate that is uh, definitely a market driver, much like in streaming services, right, where you may want to watch a particular catalog, but in order to do so, you'd have to subscribe to one provider to get it. So, again, we're seeing natural market trends that we see in other technological areas starting to affect the AI race, where, okay. again, it's no longer about, hey, do we just have the best technology? It's about what are the unique angles we can take to get people to use our technology. So okay. ChatGPT brokering that deal um, is a step in the right direction for them to continue to be uh, the household AI name. All right. So far, we've been very focused on consumer applications. What about enterprise? After that code red that we heard of, open AI. We've been talking a lot about this battle, but it really has been focused on the consumer applications. When we're talking about enterprise, who do you see in the, in the, the front of that race? And what do you think about open AI's efforts in particular? So I believe that they're taking two different approaches. Um, well, let me rephrase this. I believe that there are two different approaches that are being deployed in the market to be able to capture enterprise adoption of AI. The first is to provide infrastructure, which is the approach that you see Microsoft and folks like Amazon taking, where they're trying to provide the computing power and the actual physical hardware infrastructure and the elements around that for, for companies to be able to build their own AI systems or deploy it within their companies. What OpenAI is looking at doing instead of following that old way of doing things is there 
attempting to build the actual products that businesses would need, right? And so you see the Instagram CEO coming over. You hear Sam Altman in conversations and in interviews talking about how they're looking to build applications across every vertical. If you go look at their hiring page, they have roles open for people to shape products for specific industries. And so again, if Chad GPT is the household name, they're already ingrained into society. Their battle is about imagining new products, whereas these larger tech companies are having to go sell innovation.